Everywhere, people are living longer. Adults in industrialized nations now can live an average of 80 years or more. Indeed, 50% of babies born in developed countries today can expect to live to be 100 years of age. And old age ain't what it used to be. The rates of chronic disabilities among people over age 65 have been decreasing for decades, which is wonderful news. However, we have to appreciate that in the last 100 years since Al Waz Alzheimer's first identified the disease that bears his name, the rate of older adults who will lose their memory, their functioning, and their very selves to Alzheimer's disease will continue to climb. With global birth rates on a steady decline as fertility declines, today's babies will grow to adulthood in the near future in a world where fewer and fewer young people are available uh, to bear the financial, emotional, and other burdens of caring for greater and greater numbers of older adults debilitated by Alzheimer's disease. This epidemic is the defining natural disaster of our millennium. However, our likelihood of aging well or not isn't something that's predetermined absolutely. It's not all in your genes, although genetics do play a role in how we age. A number of uh, people take the somewhat somber or fatalistic point of view that genes determine everything and there's not much that can be done to counter these aging-related disorders. It's true, the genes we are born with are the genes that we have, and so you should choose your parents very carefully. Of course, that's not possible, and while we can't select our genetic makeup, there are meaningful steps that we can take now to recreate uh, the environment within and around us that will increase our likelihood for enjoying a long life with brain health uh, as we age. Exercise is the most powerful intervention yet known for sustaining and improving cognitive function in older adults. Cognitive function improved the most in those who engaged in combination exercises. So for example, aerobic exercise like swimming, biking, or brisk walking combined with strength training or weight-bearing exercises. Of all cognitive processes, executive function, that is the command and control operations of the brain uh, that help us plan our daily lives, uh, are most improved through exercise. Merely exercising uh, 30 minutes a day, three or four days a week, so that we break out into a sweat, is deemed by many to be sufficient enough to reduce our risk for cognitive impairment as we age. We'll get the most out of our bodies and out of our brains if we're properly fueled. We need to think about our diets, and a heart-healthy diet also works as a brain-healthy diet. So you've got to build your menus around fresh vegetables and fruits, lean proteins like fish, poultry, beans, and whole grains, and minimize your intake of saturated fats such as those found in red meats, butter, or oil. Another thing is social engagement, and by that I mean interacting with people. The richer our social network, the less likely we are to encounter cognitive impairment as we age. So get out there and be active in your communities. The other important factor is cognitively stimulating activity. Couch potatoes are at greater risk for cognitive impairment than people who play mahjong, who play cards, who read the newspaper, and you don't have to buy expensive computer games. And did I mention, if you enjoy a glass of wine, that's also deemed to be beneficial for reducing cognitive impairment. Studies suggest that persons who drink moderately, about one drink per day, are less likely to develop age-related cognitive problems. Avoidance of head injury, of course, is important, and we need to minimize hypertension, obesity, metabolic syndrome, and heart disease. That's also a risk factor for cognitive impairment. Adopting a healthy brain lifestyle at any age, I want to emphasize, may help many of us reduce or delay the effect of age-related changes in our cognition and our function. So it's never too late to embrace the lifestyles that I'm talking about. However, it will require more than what I've just been discussing to have an impact on Alzheimer's disease. The development of new drugs and effective therapies that halt the pathology of Alzheimer's disease before the symptoms appear 
is going to be the way forward if we are to realize the possibility of lifelong brain health for all. Drug discovery and translation of basic research into new therapies is a chief mission of the Center for Neurodegenerative Disease Research. Virginia Lee, my esteemed colleague and partner, both in work and in life, will tell you more. Thanks, John. Yes, since 1991, our center has promoted and conducted clinical and basic research aimed at increasing understanding of the mechanism that lead to age-related brain dysfunction. A chief hope of such research is to identify actions and agents that could slow or rest progression of the disease before symptoms appear. A drug that successfully delayed the onset of symptoms by as little as five years would allow many individuals to live a full life and die from other natural causes before the symptoms of the disease took hold. The effect of long-lasting economic downturns and sluggishness in our economy has significantly reduced venture capital funds made available to biotech companies, creating the so-called valley of death, where the translation of basic research into new therapies languishes or disappears altogether. At CNDR, we have taken on the role of a biotech in advancing drug discovery and development. CNDR's incredible basic research into biology and function of proteins involved in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's is being translated into therapeutic targets. One example of these efforts involves our work with the tau protein. We were first to demonstrate that the neurofibrillary tangles found in cell neurons that are brain cells of persons with Alzheimer's were comprised of tau protein. We identified a series of compounds that readily enter the brain and prevented tangle formation and neuron death. Pharma-sponsored clinical trials involving this compound are now underway. Industry will increasingly look to academic centers like CNDR for early stage drug candidates and validation of new approaches. Your support for the work of our center can keep us at the top of sites integral to discovery and advancement of effective new therapies for diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and ALS that steal our memory, our movement, our functioning. Where do we go from here? Well, we're talking about a, a, a problem, Alzheimer's disease and related dementias, that costs the global economy $604 billion. And for those who say, we don't have the resources, I say that's not true. It's about how we prioritize the resources we have. We spend $53 billion a year on bombs, salves, and lotions for anti-aging that don't have any effect at all. We spend $2 billion a year on popcorn, and I love popcorn too, but I'm willing to forgo my popcorn to support Alzheimer's disease research because we have the ideas, we have the people, we know where we want to go, but we just need the resources to accelerate the pace of drug discovery to eliminate Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other diseases uh, like them to create a world without dementia and without movement disorders. <laughs>